Hello Internet, welcome back to Daily Points. This video we are going to look at airflow DAGs and um, by the end of this video we should be able to write a DAG and maybe a task and be able to run it in airflow. But before we go into writing airflow DAGs, let me take you through some bit of graph theory just to understand what a DAG is and then from there we're going to write the DAGs. So on the screen here I have an analogy of what a graph is. We need to understand what a graph is. And the graph is just a connection of nodes with edges. So you have like a node here and then an edge, then another node. So an edge connects two nodes and then the nodes are like just points on an interface. But to understand what this graph is, I can take an analogy here uh, where we have intersections of roads so we can consider a road as uh, an edge and then where the roads meet as vertices or nodes or town centers being nodes and then the, the linking roads being the edges then when you extrapolate that and you plot that into a graph you get something like this so assuming that you have a node as a town and then an edge as a road, and then another node as a town, and edge. And this brings us into what is called a graph, where a graph is a set of vertices and edges, where an edge is a, a link between two vertices. And this gives a whole domain of theory called graph theory, where you can do lots of analysis from here. And uh, since I've just shown you an analogy using roads, a road network, but there are several networks that you could use. Uh, there are those ones for biology and protein networks. Um, there are networks that you can create based on the tasks. For example, the ones that we're going to be doing now where you can say, I want to create a graph that will show me what I'm doing at a particular time. So you can say, when I wake up is a node, when I boil water for tea or for coffee is another node. And then if one node depends on the other, I'll put an edge being a link between them. So this gives us a graph like this. And this is what is called a graph. There are different kinds of graphs. There are those graphs that are directed where the movement of item, for example, from one node to another is in a way that it flows from one direction to another and there are those ones that are weighted and so forth. So we can look at this diagram here, which will show you uh, a, a, a directed graph. So this directed graph, you have two nodes that ha have a relationship between each other where one directs the flow of information from one to another or one depends on, an on another. Or for example, if this were roads, it would be from this point to this point you can only go in one direction then from this point to this point you can go in one direction then from this point to the other one you can go in one direction so this is a directed graph and then this one here is undirected graph where you can go in both sides you can go from here from this node to this other node you can go back from this node to this other node so these are two different types of graphs and then we have uh, cyclic graphs and acyclic graphs. So these graphs that you're seeing here are cyclic in a way that uh, in, in, you can leave this node and come in a different direction. For example, I can leave from here, I go here to this node, and then from here, I go here to this node, and then from here, I go back to here, this node. So this one forms some kind of a circle. Um, the same as I can go from here to here, and then 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 from here to here. So this one forms another circle. So this is like a cyclic graph. And then there are those graphs that are not cyclic. When you leave one node, you cannot come back in another direction. Uh, for example, this one, if I leave node six here, I go to node one. The only direction that I can go back with is from node one to node six, but I don't have any other direction I can come. 
for all the nodes that we have in the whole graph. So if I move from here, 6 to 1, and I move from 1 to 0, there is no other direction I can move to 1 apart from 0 back to 1. So for Apache Airflow, we have things called DAGs, and DAGs are directed a cyclic, a cyclic graph. So it is direct in a way that you move from one node to another and uh, based on a certain direction and you cannot move back in the same in the same route that you took. So uh, assuming that there were arrows here, this would be a directed a cyclic graph. And it helps in a way that for airflow, the nodes are tasks and then the edges are the dependency between tasks and the dependency for the between the task is the is based on the time when one task runs for example if uh, we have task one depending on task six task six may run fast then task one will run and task one will not run before task six runs so that will be like uh, the flow of the execution will start from task 6, then go to task 1, then go to task 0, then task 3 and task 2 will only run when task 0 has successfully executed and so forth. So task 3 and task 2 don't depend on each other, but they depend on task 0 and task 5 will depend on task 3. So if task 0 fails, the rest of these other tasks on this side will fail. If task one fails, then the rest of these fail. So this will form a directed acyclic graph. So based on this information, I think we can now write a DAG because a DAG is a directed acyclic graph. So I have Airflow running on my PC here. Uh, let's try to launch it on the browser so currently i have my dag this is just a simple dag that i have just created now and uh, we can look at the definition of the dag here um, i've just imported the date time the from airflow i've imported the dag and this is the class that you're going to be using to define the dag and then this is going to be an operator and an operator is going to be defining a class it is a sorry an operator is going to be a class that is defining a task then from here i'm using a context manager with this dag to define the dag and then inside the context we are defining an empty task just as an example um, and this gives us this dag here we can click into this dag and we look at the task it has been running for long i turned off the the dag itself but this is how it looks like also i need to show you in the config here there is load examples and in this load examples i have made it false so that it doesn't load the default examples in the previous video somebody asked where you can find the config. You find it inside the Airflow folder that you're working. Remember the Airflow home? If you haven't watched uh, how we are setting up Airflow, please check the video that we have linked in the description or in the cards above this video. So we have a DAG defined here and we are going to define our own DAGs until we are comfortable with uh, different ways of defining DAGs. So in your working folder or the folder that contains your Airflow files, all these files, you should create a folder called DAGs and in that folder is where you're going to be putting your, your DAGs. I'm going to create a new file here and in this new file i'm going to create a second dag here new file and i'm going to call this second dag.py
Then we are going to write another DAG. So I'm going to use date time and date time is going to help us define the start date of the DAG or when the DAG is supposed to start. So I'm going to import date time. Then I'm going to import DAG being, being a class that is going to help us define DAGs. So from Airflow, import DAG. Then we are going to import an operator. And for this case, we're just going to use an empty operator. And, and the empty operator is going to help us define an empty task. It is just a task that does nothing. But as we go on, we are going to use Python operators and bash operators that will help us uh, define tasks that have callbacks that will help us perform real tasks, not just an empty task. But for now, to learn how to define a DAG, we're just going to use an empty operator. So from airflow dot operators dot empty we are going to import an empty operator then let's define our second DAG I'm just going to call this second DAG being equal to DAG and then the parameters we're going to pass is the DAG ID so the DAG ID should be unique for all your DAGs because it's the one that will be used to identify a DAG on your interface here, on the interface of the list, list of DAGs. So I'm going to call this second DAG. Then I'm going to define when this DAG should start running. So start, start date, and I'm going to have date time dot date time so it depends on the date you want 2023 uh, you want it to start running on august uh, let me choose september that's the date today today is 11th of september so i'm going to choose 10th of september then i want to define the schedule so we need to determine how frequent our DAG should be running. So the schedule will determine that. And we use, you can use cron notation for schedule, the way you schedule cron um, date and time. But also there are some shortcuts that you could use. For example, here I can say that this should be running daily. And that will help. Then, um, this is a second way. So remember, in the in the in the first DAG here, we define the context manager. So if I could just do this so that you can see it clearly with the colon. So this is our context, and the tasks are inside the context. So this is the task, and then the definition of the DAG is here. The second way we can define a DAG is just uh, instantiate uh, the class of the DAG into that object there. Then we can say an, our empty operator should have a task ID, which is uh, an ID that identifies the task. So for our first DAG, when we enter here, you can see that the task name is here and this is the task ID. So for all the tasks that are inside this DAG, there should be an ID that uniquely identifies it. So I'm going to call this um, first task of second DAG. You should find a way of uh, naming your tasks based on the way your team works. So it is a notation that is for your own company. Then we need to assign this task to a DAG. So the DAG should be my DAG. And I mean, not my DAG, sorry, second DAG, the name of the DAG. 
then this is how we define uh, a DAG. So let's save this and then I'm going to restart the scheduler. So I have my web server running here on this terminal. I have my scheduler running here. So I'm just going to hit Control C here. Then I'm going to rerun the scheduler. So when the scheduler starts again, it's going to pick all the all the all the DAGs, all the new DAGs. There, there is a setting that um, as we continue learning in this video series, we shall see so that um, the scheduler can automatically pick the tasks and the DAGs that are created. So when we go back to DAGs, we can see that our second DAG is here, is created. And when we click into it, we can see that first task of second DAG is here and is created. We can also click on the code to look at the definition and we can see that the same definition that we had. In this interface, we can't edit the DAG, but it just shows you um, how the DAG is defined. We could create a second empty task. I'll just copy this and let's say uh, second task of second DAG. Then we go to the green. It is not yet picked. It is picked here. You can see. And second task of second DAG. This DAG has not yet started, so we could turn it on and we can refresh. And you can see that it ran for yesterday. And uh, we can click here and try to look at the logs. There are no logs because it is an empty task. Also here, there are no logs. But um, we are going to be defining more tasks in the future. Um, those tasks will be having logs because it will be either Python operator, not an empty operator, or a bash operator. Let's create a third DAG. So I'm going to inside the DAGs folder. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it third DAG. And inside here, I'm going to import the time. Import date. Oh, so it should be third DAG dot pi. Let me just show you this third DAG dot pi. So we're going to import the time. Then we're going to import uh, from Airflow import DAG. Import DAG. Then we're going to import a bash operator. So from Airflow dot operators dot bash. We import a bash operator. Then we're going to define the DAG. So let's define a DAG using a context manager. So we're going to say with DAG. And then that DAG will have DAG ID being equal to and DAG. Then we're going to have the start date. So start, start date being date time, that's the time 2023, September 10th. Then we need uh, the schedule. So we want to schedule still, let it be daily for oh, now. Then we, we also have uh, default arguments that we could pass, for example, the number of retries. So let's try default arguments and we pass in a dictionary and we can say retries. So I'd like it, if it fails, it should retry twice. Yeah, and that is our context. 
so we can now define the tasks and this task let me call it uh, bash operator being equal to we have bash operator and the bash operator helps us to run bash scripts so the task id the task id is going to be first let me call it first task first task third dag then uh, the bash command so i need to give it a bash command and what i want it to do is to just echo hello hello airflow and then exclamation yeah so let's let's save this and let's go to our third dag then let's turn it on and let's see what's going to happen with our task so this is scheduled to run it is now having a status of which is yellow so it is up for retry so we're going to retry so we can look at the logs here and see what is happening it is trying to run and it is failing with an error, an exception that command exited with the return code of 127. So hello command is not found. So remember that we said that we should run this bash command to send hello airflow and hello command does not exist in bash. So we could change this, we could say try to echo Echo uh, let the command be echo, then it should echo um, hello airflow. <coughs> so let's try to run it again. I'm going to click on this task, then I go to details click on this and then i clear the task then let's see if it is going to run so it is queued yeah and it has run successfully we can go into the logs and we can see the output is hello airflow and uh, it was failing at first because of the of of because the bash does not ex um, does not know the command called hello, so we have given it a, a command that it knows. But let's look at the number of retries that we passed. We can see here that it failed. Then it tried again for the second time here, marking up the task for retry. Yep. So that is how you define DAGs in Airflow. In the next video, we are going to define Airflow tasks. Until then, take care.